One of the questions that keeps getting raised a lot is whether or not it would be more efficient to have patients pay a portion of the care that they use. The idea being that you eliminate what they call moral hazard, which is if, you're, if it's free, you're going to use too much of it, and you're going to make people be more careful and cautious about the care that they use. The evidence points out pretty clearly that this is a bad idea. Uh, and it's a bad idea for a lot of reasons. First, it epitomizes penny wise and pound foolish. Because, yes, indeed, people can be discouraged from making the first visit for care. What they're not that clear is when this visit is was necessary or unnecessary. So they found that if you don't get your blood pressure under control, you may have a stroke. It's, you know, over two. It's bad. It's really bad for your health and it's much more expensive. They found similarly if kids don't take their asthma medications because they can't afford it and they end up in hospital with flare-ups of the asthma. So that you have this ongoing issue that the care that you discourage is often the least expensive front-end care which can often prevent much more expensive complications. The other thing is that most of us are pretty healthy and most of us don't use a lot of care. So, it, which sort of stands to reason again because if you offer me a free pair of shoes, I might say great if they fit, but if you offer me free open heart surgery, it's very unlikely that I'm going to want to take you up on it unless I need it. So you have this funny thing coming in in healthcare, what's called need. And need cuts both ways. If I need it and I don't uh, get it, you probably say I should. If I don't need it, you probably say I shouldn't get it. And there's very few consumer goods that fall into that category. Most medical care, it's not the patient who decides, it's the provider who decides. I don't decide I need to go into the hospital. Usually it's going to be a physician who decides if I need to be hospitalized. Same thing, I don't decide if I need prescription drugs. It's going to be someone else who makes that decision. And you don't really want to give providers an economic incentive to um, push care that's not really necessary. Most providers are much too ethical to do that, but you really don't want to set up a, mar a model where the least ethical make the most money. And there's a big advantage of having something where clinical decisions about what's appropriate care are what rides it rather than consumer decisions about what I could feel that I can afford to pay for. So one of the moves that I think is extremely promising is much more careful look about what makes sense for which patients under what circumstances and try to hook up these effectiveness standards and appropriateness standards with the care that's given. And they've been doing that for cardiac disease, they've been doing that for cancer with some pretty good results. Now in terms of why the user fee thing comes keeps coming up again, uh, Bob Evans, who's a noted health economist in British Columbia, calls it zombies. He says these are ideas that should be dead, but they keep coming back to life and lurching around and doing damage. And user fees seems to be one of these zombies that even though the data is extraordinarily good, that user fees for necessary care don't make a lot of sense. Um, people keep suggesting them.